Hey friends, welcome to this week's studio chat. Um, this week I wanted to share with you how the fox painting has been developing. We're on week three, I guess, of figuring out this painting. And I did finish it, and then I've started a new piece in this Woodland Animal series that um, I will share with you. So let me pull the easel over and you can take a look. Okay, here. <laughs> I'll just... I'll just snuggle up to the easel. <laughs> so here is the finished box painting. I am really happy with how it turned out. And um, I thought I'd just tell you a little bit about how I worked my way through this painting. So it definitely went through lots of phases. Some paintings of mine are very direct. Like I start out, I love the beginning sketch. And then I just keep following that sketch all the way to the end. And for this fox painting, um, you'll remember from last week, it looked very rough, very beginning, but I also had a lot of texture in there and I also had some different flowers. So these flowers here, I decided to replace the flowers, the passion fruit flowers that I had showed you last week um, with these more, they're more fluttery, I suppose. Um, the passion fruit flowers were very structural and very linear and had a lot of like, crisp lines in them just by like the nature of the flower and I was just trying it out but I didn't like the look of it and I wanted something more impressionistic something a little bit more expressive and a little bit more loose and that I could be more loose and free and colorful with so um yeah so I replaced those flowers and one of the things I was reminded of as I was working through this painting was how much of a sort of back and forth push and pull there is for me and my personal work between how much clarity I want in a painting and how much um, abstraction and how much haze and texture I want in a painting. And there's always this push and pull. I um, Some of my work in the past has been very crisp and clear and some of it has been very, um, obscured by texture and textural strokes and marks and swashes of color. And I find it really interesting. I'm always sort of navigating where I want that line to be in whatever painting I'm creating. And part of my process is um, intentionally obscuring layers of the painting. After I kind of do an initial painting, I obscure it with lots of textural strokes and marks because I find that builds up a lot of really fun, unexpected sort of colors, color combinations, color layering, and just brings a more, um, I don't know, gritty feel a little bit to the painting. Um, a little bit more atmosphere. I just keep using that word, I feel like, but um, it's not so clear and crisp, it's more atmospheric. And so then from that point, I kind of have to navigate how much resolution, how much clarity I wanna bring back into the painting and how much I wanna push and pull that. So this painting ended up with a lot of clarity. I kind of um, got really crisp and clean with a lot of my strokes. Um, I haven't painted animals, uh, not animals, but like furry, fuzzy sort of animals. I haven't painted them in a long time. I used to paint animals all the time, especially when I was a kid. Um, I painted animals that were very detailed with lots of little hair strokes. And so this was bringing me back to painting animals like that. And I was trying to decide how much clarity I wanted to bring in. I like the haziness, I like the texture. Um, so I decided to bring more focus into his face and less focus into other areas of the body. And I feel like I was able to kind of create a good balance where there's a lot of texture still hiding in the background. And, um, but there's more crisp, crisp strokes <laughs> closer in the foreground on the flowers and on the fox's face. I think it's always fun to see how a first painting in a series ends up because it kind of is like a marker post to kind of guide me as I create the rest of the series. I kind of see how I solve the problems in this particular piece and then that will sort of show me um, how to kind of continue solving problems along the way. It also sort of sets the tone of the of the collection of work. I really tried for jewel tones and more autumnal sort of colors. This was about as good as I could do. I really struggle. 
I really struggle with jewel tones and like more muted colors in my work. I just naturally am drawn to bright, clear colors. And so um, I think pushing to be more jewel toned really brought in more of these like deeper colors in the magnolias and in the peonies. And then I kind of just was like, nah, I'll just go ahead and be bright and pink, <laughs> bright and colorful and more like summery sort of feelings. But I feel like it's, it's, um, it still matches the color palette of the fox. And I tried to bring some of those colors into the fox's coat. Um, so yeah, we just had like a little crit session about that painting. I also wanted to share with you before I um, draw this to a close, the new painting that I began for this series. Okay, so here is a fawn. I'm really excited about this painting. Now this is interesting because the fox, I was really feeling my way for quite a while, trying to figure out what elements I wanted there around the fox. And as soon as I sketched in this deer, I knew exactly what I wanted to be there. It's so, so funny how different paintings just, I don't know, take different paths. Um, but I knew like immediately once the deer was there that I wanted it to be like in this bed of grasses. And then I wanted like sort of a partially shadowed part in the sunlight sort of, um, vines, like vine roses hanging down behind the deer. Obviously it's in the very beginning stages, just like the fox was last week. Um, but I was having so much fun just being loose and brushy with these beginning brush strokes and a lot more bright color, I think is going to make its way into this piece, but I want to see how I can keep some of these darker shadowy pieces. I'm just really excited to see how this one develops. And so I'll be sure to share it with you and kind of, we can kind of compare and contrast like how it's more or less resolved, I guess, than the Fox one next time. All right, we will chat some more next week and I will catch up with you then. Bye for now.